Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be making this interactive display that is quite mesmerizing and addicting to play with. So actually the tutorial is inspired by this display that you see on the website here. I will link it down below. It is a project by Google Creative Lab called AnyPixel. JS is actually quite old around I think seven years ago and back then I really wanted to create a project using their open source software and hardware library to create this interactive light wall like the one that they have in this video I never got around to it but maybe I should do it one day but for today let's just try to get this going before we start making a grid of rotating squares, I want to just make one square that rotates based on distance of your mouse and the square so that we understand how just one square works. And then after that, we can make it out into a grid. What you need is that you need to call the rex function, which takes in the x and y location of the top left corner and the width and the height. But because we're going to be using the rotating function, which rotates around the center of a rectangle, I am going to change the rec mode to center. And then now if, let's say, I want to draw it in the middle of the screen, let's do the size um, 150. We're going to draw a rectangle so we can see when it rotates. And there you go. It is smacked in the middle where the X and Y location is in the center of the rectangle. To rotate this rectangle, we need to use the built-in function called rotate. And how rotate works is that it rotates the shape around the origin point. But right now, the origin point is actually at the top left corner of our canvas. So we also need to use another function called transform. And transform basically moves the coordinate system around or it moves the origin point. So we're going to translate the origin point to the center of the canvas. So now that we move the origin point from this point here to the middle of the canvas, so now we can draw the rectangle at 0, 0. And then we have the same thing. And now we can use the rotate function. And the rotate function can take in an angle in either degrees or radians. But because we're not going to get into radians in this video, let's just set the angle mode to degrees. And let's say that I put in 90 degrees here. And then now you can see that the shape is rotated 90 degrees. And let's do 180. Okay, let's move it back to zero. The way that we're going to rotate this shape is that we're going to put in a new variable. And let's set that as angle. Start at zero. Every time the draw function is called, we're going to move it by a certain increment. Let's do, how about, one degree. And then now our shape is rotating. But now we don't want it to rotate all the time, right? We want it to only rotate when the mouse is at a certain distance from the shape or from the center of this shape. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new variable called distance. And distance, we're going to calculate the distance between the mouse location and the center of the rectangle. So we can use the built-in function called dist, which calculates the distance between two points. And then the arguments are going to be the x and y coordinates of the two points. So it's going to be mouse x and mouse y. And then it's going to be width divided by 2 and height divided by 2, right? Which is the center point of the canvas where the rectangle is. Make sure that you don't put 0, 0 here because the translate function doesn't actually translate where the mouse location is. So if you put 0 and 0 here, it actually going to calculate the distance between where the mouse is and the original origin point, which is at the top left corner of the canvas. So now that we have the distance variable calculated as the distance between two points, now we can use a conditional statement that say if distance is less than or equals to a certain amount, how about we do, let's say, 30. Then that's when we want the shape to rotate. It doesn't rotate. And now that I'm getting closer and closer, stop rotating. Stop rotating. And there you go. So now that we have this, we can start making a grid of 
these shapes. What we're going to do is that we're going to create an object of these squares. So let's just start by creating a new file. So you can come here, click create file, and then let's name this, how about brick, brick.js. Don't forget to go to index.html file and then copy this line of code here. Change the name of the file here to whatever is the name of the new JavaScript file that you have. And this is the way that you integrate the new file into your program. So don't forget to do this. And now let's go back to this. To create a class, we start with the name class and then the name of that class within the constructor function. So essentially what we're gonna do is that we're going to copy and paste all of this, right? We already created one brick that works, but it's gonna be an object. So now what we want is that we want X and Y as a parameter of this constructor class, and then we're going to set this x equals to x, this y equals to y. And let's start by drawing it out. So let's name the method display. And we want to, how about we just copy all of this. We need to change a few things. The first one is that this width divided by two and height divided by two has to be changed to the center of the rectangle, right? So it's gonna be this X and this Y. And we also want to translate it to this X and this Y. We will also want to change this hard code distance here. So how about we just put in D as a parameter and also the size here. Another variable within the constructor function that I want to add is angle and we're going to start it at zero. So if this angle we're going to change by one and size here is going to be a global variable that we're going to set in our sketch file. Okay, so once we have this Let's go back to sketch.js. And now we do not need this anymore. And we don't need any of this anymore. So let's create an object called, how about B for brick. Just one, one brick. B is going to be a new brick. What are the three arguments? We have actually just two X and Y, right? So let's just draw the exact same thing here. So I'm gonna put X as width divided by two and Y as height divided by two. And then we just have to call the method by putting the name and then a dot and then display. And within display, we also need to put in the distance argument, right? So let's do 30. Oh, and then we also need size. So how about let's do size as 100 for now. Now it's gonna be a square. Okay, and then it moves once the mouse is 30 pixels from the center. All right, so now it works. The next thing that we need to do is that we don't want to only create one brick, right? We want to create a bunch of bricks. What we're going to do now is that we're going to create an array, a 2D array, and let me call it bricks. And then we also need to create two more variables, columns and rows. And actually, we also need this size here. I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to delete B part here. Within the set of function, we're going to create a new 2D array, and we will be using a nested loop. I have a lot of exercises on how to actually create the 2D array, so please check that out if you're not familiar, because we actually have been using a lot of this fundamental concepts in many of the coding tutorials. So before I start populating this 2D array. Let's also set what columns is. Columns is going to be width divided by size, and then rows is going to be height divided by size. In the outer 
for a loop, we need to first populate the brick the bricks array with empty 1D arrays. And then in the inner one, we're going to create new bricks, right? So I'm just going to copy this. Then I'm going to delete this. And now instead of width divided by 2 and height divided by 2, we have to put in i times size and j times size. And we also need another 2D array to call the display method on all of the new bricks objects. Okay. Display. And then let's do the same distance for all of them. Maybe 30 might be too large, but just let's see. What's going on here? The thing that we missed is that right now, instead of only having one square or one brick, we have multiple. And to use the transformation and rotation functions without using these other two functions called push and pop, it doesn't save and unsave the transformations. The push function saves the current transformation while the pop function returns it back to the original setting. So within each of these square, you want to save and then return back to the original setting before you call another transformation. So we have to go back to brick.js and then inside this display here, we are going to write push here and then pop at the end. Okay. And there you go. So as you can see here, we also need to shift how we draw the squares, half of the size to the right and then half of the size down. So here we can do, so we need to go back to sketch.js and then in here, we're gonna do size divided by two plus, size divided by two plus. Okay, and now once we put There you go. Okay, so what is missing here? As you can see, when the distance is more than this variable here, the shape stops rotating. But we don't want it to just stop like this. We want it to keep rotating and then stop when it hits a certain parameter. So back at the brick.js file, what we're gonna write is that we're gonna add into this if statement here. Before we do that, I actually want to create a new method and then put all of that in there. So I'm gonna call it move, and then let's just put all of this in. And we also need this variable inside here as well. And then we're going to call this method move. How we call a method within a class is that we just put in this dot and then the name of the method. If distance is less than or equals to D, then move the angle and then make sure you put D in here as well. Else, what we want to do is that if this dot angle is more than zero, meaning that the shape is already rotating, and this dot angle is less than, let's do maybe 50. So it hasn't rotated up to 50 yet. Then what we want to do is that we want to let this dot angle to keep incrementing by one. Else if this dot angle is already more than 50, so it rotates more than 50 times already, then I want to set this dot angle back to zero. So it's a pretty abrupt stop, but let's see. Ah, need to put D here. It's a pretty abrupt stop, as you can see, but when the shape is smaller or the size is smaller, it's not gonna be as abrupt. All right, so let's just try that. So let's go back to sketch 
And then maybe we change the size to 10. Okay, still a bit difficult to see. So let's work on two things. The first thing that we want to work on is right now, all the squares are right next to each other. I want to have a little bit of an offset. So let's create a new variable called offset. And then let's set that to four and then go back to brick.js. So now how we're going to draw it instead of the size here, we're going to do size minus offset. Then we're going to give it another parameter here. Okay, so in display, we also need to give an offset. So let's try that. Okay, so now you see that they're not next to each other anymore. But right now it's very difficult to see. So let's work on the appearance. Let's start by doing the background as black. And then inside the brick class, we're going to do no fill. And I want the stroke color to be a new variable. Let's do this dot color. And within the constructor function, we're going to set it at 70. So it's going to be dark, quite dark. Okay. So now it starts as this darker gray. So now all we have to do is that we need to come to the move function again. I want the color of my squares to be white when it rotates. So it's within this conditional statement, right? So this dot color will be white here. Okay. But now it's like we're drawing on the grids because now all the shapes that have rotated before, even though the mouse is not close to it anymore, it stays white. So now we have to come into this conditional statement in here else here so let me just so we want to create another conditional statement that says if this dot color is more than 70 which means that it is white right because the only time that it is more than 70 is when it is at 255 we want to decrement it let's do by 30 and else, if it's already not less than 70, let's just set it to 70. So let's try that. <laughs> All right, so I think you can play around just to get the look that you want. And I think like the key thing here is that I think this 30 here might be too large. So what if we do 50? 15. Oh, I actually meant to do three here so you actually can see a trail. Ah, there you go. All right, so that's pretty fun. There's actually still a lot for you to play around, whether it be to change the settings here, whether it be the size of the grid, the color, the change of the angle, or you can try a more complicated one similar to the one you see on the anypixel.js website. Give it a try.